When it comes to pay, there's a certain part of a government job that confuses a lot of people. And that's essentially that jobs pay the same. First, you have to understand that most government jobs are on the GS pay band, and that goes from GS1 to GS15. Within that range, your job doesn't really matter when it comes to pay. For example, take a lawyer, take an attorney, GS11. That individual is going to get paid the same as an administrative specialist that is a GS11. Now, obviously, the lawyer had to go through seven years of university and law school in order to get their law degree. They had to pass the bar. There was a lot of challenges. It probably cost money and it took the time. The administrative specialist, they don't necessarily had to have gone to college. They could have came out with a GED, maybe did some community college classes, and they would still be qualified to get in as a GS6, GS7, and then after a couple of years, make it to GS11. That is possible. You take two professions like that, and for the, for the average individual, when they see those two professions, they automatically assume that the attorney is gonna get paid more, and that's not the case. It reminds me somewhat of the military where you could have people in different occupations, but at the same rank. So take an E6 in the military, that's a cook, and they're flipping omelets. They're cooking biscuits, they're a cook. Then you could have an E6 in Afghanistan that's defusing bombs on the road. So these two individuals, they could also be getting paid the same. And that's, that's kind of how it works when you're looking into the government. This is one of the reasons why a lot of people, they're not interested in getting a federal government job because they feel like the private sector is going to pay and compensate them at a higher level for the skills that they have. Now, the federal pay agent is a panel that gets together every year to discuss if GS employees are getting the correct locality pay. They specifically identify that federal agencies are becoming less competitive at attracting new and experienced applicants. This is due to pay inflation in high in demand skills. So what are high in demand skills? Well, the first clue is to go to usajobs.gov and look at the urgent hire list because those skills are in high demand. And you can take your pick here. A lot of these positions are in IT, finance, engineering, and in the sciences. Some of these jobs will have an incentive bonus or perhaps they'll pay for relocation expenses. And at the same time, look at the IT folks, especially in the VA right now. They have SSR, which is special salary rate. Their pay is about 10 or 15% more than somebody who's working a non-IT type job. So there is that. And the VA also compensates their nurses at a higher level because they're not on the GS pay scale. They're on the VM pay scale and their salary can go over $200,000 a year. Then we have other pay bands such as AD and CL. So some of these pay bands, they can go up into the $200,000 range. But for the most part, most employees are on the GS pay band. This report suggests that both your starting pay and your annual pay increases, they should be given based on the merit of the job, based on the profession. How in demand is that profession? Now, when they made this suggestion, they also said that this would be impractical. It's probably not going to happen. And the main reason for this is it's really hard for them to do this and people not looking and saying, hey, that's not fair. Why is this profession weighed higher than this other profession? It's not being equal. So that's one of the fears. The panel would also have to spend a lot of hours analyzing each job series. And if you don't know, we have hundreds of job series. So that's a huge time commitment as well. The easiest thing to do is what we've been doing, and that's to give a set target pay increase for everybody two, three, four percent, as long as it keeps up with a pace of inflation, it should be fine, right? That's a, that's a real simple way of keeping track of everything. But the problem is that it has not been keeping up with the pace of inflation. Just look last year, inflation exceeded the pay raise by at least three, three and a half percent. And even if you look back the last 10 years, there's been a disparity when it comes to our pay raises and the actual inflation rate. Overall, when we're talking about the pay, the salary, the compensation, it's never gonna be the number one reason that attracts a person into the public sector. What's really gonna do it for them? the benefits, and specifically the pension, the thing that most jobs don't offer anymore. That's what's really getting people in. Also the stability, when an economic downturn occurs, when a recession, a depression happens, you will have more security in a public sector government job. I understand that when many people are considering getting into the federal government, one of the questions that's often asked is, 
how much of a pay cut should I take before I, I accept this government job? And my answer is usually, you know, try not to take a pay cut at all. And if you're not aware of this, you can negotiate your step level. And between step one and step 10, and a lot of GS grades, it could be up to $30,000 difference. So it's in your best interest that when you're extended that tentative job offer, try to negotiate your step level. If you are still looking for a federal government job, I did a live stream recently where I answer over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process, about usajobs.gov, about how to get a government job. Some of these questions could be on your mind. If you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.